be known as Samuel and Anna Petra, love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. They've come here this morning to make their vows before us and in the presence of Jesus and according to his teaching. Our Lord Jesus Christ said of marriage that from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. So Jesus said, they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no one separate. Marriage is the symbol of God's unending love for his people and of the union between Christ and his church. So the Apostle Paul teaches that the husband must love his wife as Christ loved the church and that the wife must be due honour to her husband. Marriage should be honoured by all and is not to be entered into lightly or carelessly but with the reverent and serious respect for those purposes for which it was instituted by God. Marriage is a gift from God. It's a gift for the well-being of mankind and for the proper expression of the natural instincts and affections with which he has endowed us. It is a lifelong union in which a man and a woman are called so to give themselves in body, mind and spirit and so to respond that from their union will grow a deepening knowledge and love of each other in the joys and sorrows of life, in prosperity and adversity, they share their companionship, faithfulness and strength. In marriage, a new family is established in accordance with God's purpose, so that children may be born and nurtured in secure and loving care for their well-being and instruction, and for the good order of society to the glory of God. Samuel and Anna Petra have now come here to be joined in this holy union to which God has led them. They seek his blessing on their life together that they may fulfil his purpose for them. And they're asking us to support them in this prayer. If any person can show why they may not lawfully be joined in marriage, he should speak now or hereafter remain in silence. And at that moment, silence is gone. <laughs> I charge you both, Samuel and Anna Petra, as you will answer before God, that if either of you know any reason why you may not lawfully be joined together in marriage, you now confess it. For be assured that those who marry otherwise than God's word allows are not joined together by God, neither is their marriage lawful in his sight. Samuel, will you take Anna Petra to be your wife, to live together according to God's law? Will you give her the honour due to her as your wife, and forsaking all others, love and protect her, as long as you both shall live? I will. Anna Petra, will you take Samuel to be your husband, to live together according to God's law? Will you give him the honour due to him as your husband? and forsaking all others, love and protect him as long as you both shall live. Who brings this woman to be married to this man? Thank you, Megan. We're going to pray together for Samuel and Anna Petra. You'll see the words printed at the top right hand side of uh, the pink sheet, just after where we were singing. join me in praying to our God for, for Samuel and Anna Petra. Lord God in heaven, we pray that Christ will be more and more at home in the hearts of Anna Petra and Samuel, living with them as they trust in him and as their faith increases. As they are rooted and established in God's love, 
May they be able to grasp how wide and long, high and deep is the love of Christ. May they be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. To God who is able to do more than all we ask or imagine. To Him be the glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forevermore. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Before God and in the presence of us all, by solemn consent and promise, by the giving and receiving of rings, and by the joining of hands, Samuel and Anna Petra have now accepted each other in marriage. In the name of God, I declare them to be husband and wife. <laughs> Well, we're going to sing giving thanks to God.
ですね。はい
Well, I wonder, has it struck you like it struck me? What an extraordinary event we're involved in, in here this morning. And uh, certainly it's marvellous to see these folks looking like they do. Uh, I hadn't met Robert and Benjamin before, but I've never seen Sam looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> and to say nothing of the ladies. And uh, to say nothing of the rest of you. Or to say nothing of me, I'm not usually dressed like this. It really is. A, it, it, it's a great day, isn't it? But when I say it's, it's an extraordinary event, I'm not talking about the way that we look. Uh, you may look no different than you do on a work day. What I'm talking about is the nature of the event that we're involved with here today. Just think of the parts of the Bible we just heard read. There are parts of the Bible there that are, well, if you didn't see them as irrelevant, you may have seen them as repulsive. Certainly many people in our society uh, are turned off when they hear things like what we've just heard from the Bible. For a lot of people, it's the kind of stuff that ought to be fossilised, like dinosaur bones and stuck away in a museum somewhere, for those who are interested in things from the distant past. But Sam, Samuel and Anna Petra have said, have wanted them read at their wedding, and they want to base their life on those parts of the Bible that were read for us this morning. I don't know if you've noticed, but they don't especially look like fossils to me. They're people who were living in 1993. And when I say it's extraordinary, I'm saying it's extraordinary that uh, when some of the things that the Bible says are so unpopular, that they're willing to commit themselves to it in, in such a vital area to their lives as their marriage. What I want to do in the next few moments is just to show you very briefly what the Bible says about marriage. And uh, the passage that Anna Petra's mother read for us from Ephesians 5 is a better summary than anywhere of what God says about marriage. There's just three things that I want to say. The first one is that Christian marriage is based on the love of Jesus. Christian marriage is based on the love of Jesus. And that's the biggest point. But there's two other things. And that is that in Christian marriage, there's a special thing said to wives and a special thing said to husbands. So the first of those is that Christian marriage is based on the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus. What's the love of Jesus like? Well, the love of Jesus is love for the unlovely. I don't know if you've thought about it that way before, but Jesus' love is love for the unlovely. I wonder, does it help to think this way? Every breath that you breathe, every time your heart beats, it only happens because God makes it happen. The world we live in is God's, and we are God's. We're made by Him, and we owe Him everything that we've got. But none of us choose to give Him the honour and the thanks that is due to Him. The Bible goes further. It says that all of us rebel against God, that we choose to ignore God, not because we don't know anything about Him, but because we choose to turn our backs on Him. We rebel against Him, and we ignore Him. The Bible calls us enemies of God because we've alienated Him. We've turned our backs on Him. But the message about the love of Jesus is that despite the way we treat God, He still holds out His love to us. We ignore Him. We rebel against Him. That's offensive to God. And yet He still remains committed to what is good for us. So the love of Jesus is love for the unlovely. Now you know the quality of love when you see how much someone is willing to give for someone else. And the love that Jesus has is not just love for the unlovely, but it's a costly love for the unlovely. We saw that in the passage that Joanne read for us, where it described how Jesus the Son was with the Father in heaven, but he chose, he willingly chose, to enter human history. Not because he had to, but because he wanted to. He was willing to live in the, in the dirt and grime of the Roman Empire. He humbled himself. He made himself a slave to the needs that you and I have. He entered Roman, the, the Roman Empire knowing that he would eventually hang on a Roman cross. We'll be giving thought to that in the next week or two as Easter approaches. So the love that Jesus has is love for those who are unlovely in his eyes. And it's a love which is willing to pay. A, will, a love which is costly. And it cost Jesus terribly. It meant being torn apart from the Father and carrying the weight of the punishment that you and I should have carried. Now, Christian love is based on the love that Jesus has. Costly love for the unlovely. 
And yes, we're up to marriage. Christian marriage is based on the love that Jesus has. Love for the unlovely, which is willing to pay the cost. So Christian marriage is not just based on the passion that I feel towards someone who I'm attracted to. It's not just a lover's passion for a beautiful, attractive person. In Christian marriage, we're called on not to stop loving just because the other person does something wrong to you. You don't stop loving because it hurts you to do it. Because our love in Christian marriage is based on the love that God has shown for us. God's love is a tough, tenacious love. And Sam and Anna Petra have committed themselves to that kind of love for each other. They haven't said, I'm going to love you and go on loving you as long as you look as beautiful as you are today. They've said, I'm going to love you for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, for better or for worse. Now that's an extraordinary pledge in an age when so few people are willing to make commitments in anything, especially in the, in the, the relationship of marriage. So it's an extraordinary event that we're involved in today. Here are two people committing themselves to each other for good in a commitment-free age. So that's extraordinary. It may even be surprising in our current climate. But that's not all you want to say about their marriage and their commitment to each other. Because there are aspects of their commitment to each other which are downright unpopular. There's a couple of words there in Ephesians 5 which are offensive. And no doubt, as they were read, it raised the hackles with some of you. And if you could have had an easy exit, maybe you would have shot through it at that point. There's been phenomenal change take place in Australian society in the last 20 or 30 years. Someone who's charted that has been Hugh Mackay, who's just released a very interesting book, Reinventing Australia. And he says that the biggest single change in Australian society in the last 20 or 30 years has been in the roles of men and women. Increasingly, it's the respectable way to think that there is no difference between men and women. And that's especially the case, the place, the case in the workplace, but it's also the case in the home. And to see there being distinctions between men and women, well, that's where it gets offensive. But listen to the word that is spoken to wives by Paul in Ephesians. Wives, says Paul, submit yourselves to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the saviour. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit themselves to their husbands in everything. Now, the way the word submit is used in our society, it has terrible connotations. And so you hear the word, especially when it's addressed to the wife, and it sounds demeaning. It brings a patriarchy. And it brings to mind those kinds of relationships that we know about, where the wife, well, she's literally beaten into submission. The husband makes her submit. But none of that is implied by the way in which the word is used here. Because this word is not addressed to husbands. It's addressed to wives. It's not the role of the husband to make his wife submit. That's the responsibility and the privilege of the wife. It's a voluntary thing. And a Petra is being invited to gratefully accept the leadership that Samuel provides. This is something that flows from, from the heart of a God who cares for us, who cares for Samuel and Anna Petra. God has given women just the right kind of resources to care for the needs of their husbands. Another part of the Bible says, it wasn't good for the man to be alone. So God created a suitable helper for him. So God has given to Anna Petra just the right kind of ability to accept and support Sam, which will enhance the whole of his life. He's made Anna Petra the kind of person who will complement the kind of person that Sam is. Now that's not saying it'll it'll always be easy to offer this kind of uh, response to him. There'll be times, no doubt, when it's downright hard, very hard, to respect him and to accept him. 
He'll do things that provoke her. There'll be times when it's tempting for her to try to manipulate him. But the word from the hand of God, from the mouth of God, is submit yourself to Sam. Respect this man. Now, it is an extraordinary word in the 1990s. But as I said, it's a word that comes from the mouth of the God who has made us, who invented the idea of male and female, of marriage. It comes from the God who cares intimately for Sam and Anna Petra. So there's the word for Anna Petra. Submit to this man and respect him. But there's also a word for Sam. And it's actually a longer word. Or there's a longer description. The word to Sam is, love this lady. Now most of us think he gets off lightly at that point. He's not told to submit to her. He can make her do what he wants. But that's not what it says here. Remember, this, uh, the, the submit word is not spoken to Sam, but to Anna Petra. The husband is told to love his wife. I'll just read for you. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The particular word is to love her. To love her just like Christ loved the church. If we feel Sam's getting away with something easy, it's because we don't understand the nature of the love of Jesus for the church. How does Christ love the church? Well, he doesn't stomp on her, or crush her, or stifle her. Instead, he sacrifices himself. He woos the church. He brings out in the church the way it was meant to be. The husband is certainly called to be ahead of his wife, but that gives him no permission to domineer her or to oppress her. This is not a charter for domination. The headship of the husband is modelled on the headship of Christ, which is a self-giving headship. And the word is qualified by an extraordinary idea. It's a, it's a complicated idea. You may not have been able to get your mind around it as it was read. But this is the way it works. Before today, Sam and Petra were two individual people. But as they come together in marriage, they become one person. Their marriage is a union of two people, so that they become one. And the parallel that's drawn here is between those two people becoming one, and the head and the body being one. And just as it would make no sense for my head to bite and devour the rest of my body, so it makes no sense for the husband to bite and devour his husband, his wife. Rather, it makes sense that he use every resource at his disposal to care for her and to do what's best for her. That's the way in which Jesus acted as head of the body, the church. So the word for Samuel here is, are you willing to give up your life for Anna Petra? That's an extraordinary question, but it means just what it says. Now, it may mean doing the spectacular thing, there they are on their honeymoon. There's a, a marauding bunch of thugs and Sam throws himself in front of them. It might be doing a spectacular thing. But it's much more likely that it will mean something less spectacular and much more difficult. Day by day, Sam has got to learn to focus his energies on Anna Petra. To learn to think about what's best for her and to give himself to her and to turn his interests away from himself so that what's best happens for Anna Petra. That's what it means for him to love her. He's not getting off easy. It's a hard word for him and for all of those of us who are husbands. So Sam has got the opportunity to provide for Anna Petra a secure environment, an environment where she can blossom and flourish so that that inner beauty that, she, that, that we know she has will grow and glow so that it's even more evident. So there's a distinct word for husbands and a distinct word for wives. A distinct word for Sam and a distinct word for Anna Petra. God has given Sam a wife whom he can support and respect. Whom he can honour whom he can lead in godliness. 
so that she has the security to richly respond to the world around her. And God has given to Anna Petra someone who she can submit to, who she can honour and respect, so that Sam can move forward into the world with the confidence that he needs. This is a word that comes from God who cares deeply, both for Sam and for Anna Petra. Yes, it's a different word to each of them, but it's a different word that means they can work together in a complementary way. So what we've, what we've seen and heard this morning really is extraordinary. These two people are committing themselves to a marriage that many people think ought to be fossilised. It's extraordinary that in a commitment-free age, they are committing themselves to a marathon marriage. It's ex extraordinary in a, that in an age where, the, where sex role distinctions are out of vogue, that they are committing themselves to being man and woman, husband and wife. It's extraordinary and we're privileged to be a part of it, to witness it and to be involved in what they're doing. Sam and Anna Petra have got a great opportunity to give to each other exactly what they need. Now, I'm looking forward to seeing what the years will hold for you too. Many of us know how much they've had to offer as individuals. Who knows what they'll have to offer as, a, as two who've become one. Make sure that you stick with the commitment that you've made today. We want to support you in whatever way we can. And merely by being here, we're doing that. We know that it won't always be easy for you to stick with the commitment that you've made. But it's our delight to see you making this commitment to one another. Marriage is a precious gift from God. So make sure that you cherish it. We're going to sing. The words are again printed inside the pink sheets. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and call contempt on all my pride. Please stand and we'll sing together.
for Samuel and Anna Petra as they set out on their life together. We'll uh, begin by praying together in the way that Jesus taught his disciples with the Lord's Prayer. And then Brooke and Janine will come and lead us from the front here in prayer. So will you join me in praying to our God? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In prayer. Heavenly Father, we have often thanked you for seeing Mount Petra as individuals. Now we thank you for them as a couple. We pray that they will be prepared for their future together. But we pray that they will be supportive of each other while Sam is at Bible College and that they have sufficient resources, both financial and emotional, to cope with their immediate future situation. We pray for Sam that he'll be equipped for his study and thank you that Anna Petra knows that she'll be able to play an active role in this to prepare them for ministry together. We pray that they grow more and more united in love and that they be patient and encouraging to each other, especially when they, as we all do, find, them, find themselves in difficult circumstances. Please bring them the joys that their marriage vows promise. We pray that their marriage would reflect the relationship between Christ and his church, that Sam would love and give himself to Anna Petra to present her wholly before Christ, and that Anna Petra would be happy to submit to Sam as Christians should submit to Christ as their head.
Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Green.